In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Are you people in Galatia mad? Has someone put a spell on you in spite of the plain explanation you have had of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? Let me ask you one question. Was it because you practiced the law that you received the Spirit, or because you believed what was preached to you? Are you foolish enough to end in outward observances what you began in the Spirit? Have all the favours you received been wasted? And if this were so, they would most certainly have been wasted. Does God give you the Spirit so freely and work miracles among you because you practice law or because you believed what was preached to you? The Word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour in the house of David his servant, as he promised by the lips of holy men, those who were his prophets from of old. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. A Saviour who would free us from our foes, from the hands of all who hate us, so his love for our fathers is fulfilled and his holy covenant remembered. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. He swore to Abraham our father to grant us that free from fear and saved from the hands of our foes, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, My friend, lend me three loaves because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, do not bother me. The door is bolted now, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asked for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg? If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord 
Today, in our first reading, we are challenged to ask ourselves, as a baptized child of God, which should I follow, faith or the law? Before answering that, however, we need to know the context of today's first reading. This was written to address the issue of placing the law of circumcision as a requirement to be a follower of Christ and for salvation. And this brought some confusion and even distress among the people, Gentiles and Jews who were converts to the Christian faith. I suppose this question, faith or law, still arise today. As baptized people, do I really need to follow the laws, be it natural law, man-made laws, church law or secular law, or I only need to follow or to live my faith? I believe as baptized people, both are equally important. Because while faith is our relationship with God, laws, observance of laws, are expressions of that relationship with God. As such, we can even say that faith and law complement each other. Also, you may ask, because both brings us to the knowledge and the experience of God. For example, while faith calls us to respect the dignity of every person because we have been made in the image and likeness of God, laws, such as laws against human trafficking and slavery, are put in place to ensure that we do respect each other's dignity. Another example is while faith calls us to protect all life, from birth to death, both creature and creation, for we have been entrusted by God since the book of Genesis to care for all life. Laws such as environmental laws or laws against murder, for example, are put in place to ensure we do just that. The problem is, we often don't realize how faith and law actually complement each other. And so we tend to see a conflict between faith and law because we either place faith over law and so we try to interpret the law according to our understanding or we place the observance of the law above faith, that we think that the law will save us, like the people in the first reading. We need to have a balance and a proper understanding of these two. And this is where deepening our faith is important, so that we may observe the laws, be it natural, man-made, church or secular, in its proper and correct intention. Faith and laws reminds us that life is not about us. It's about living for, caring, and protecting the other. Because it is our duty as followers and stewards of God's creation. And so we exercise our faith by observing laws that cares and protects the other. Faith and laws challenges us to be humble, that we to serve and protect others not serve our own motives. And how does this tie in with today's gospel about the persistent friend and of Jesus' promise that if we ask, seek and knock, we will get them? Perhaps you can see the giving of the bread out of friendship's sake is the eventual living out of the friend's faith in the other person. And in the promise of getting what we ask, seek and knock, it's not about asking, seeking and knocking on God's door until God gives in to our requests. Rather, it is the challenge to be humble, to be humble to ask, to seek and to knock on the doors of our hearts, that we may discern and discover God's bigger plan to serve our fellow sisters and brothers. And so, let us today and always strive to deepen our faith that we may not observe the laws blindly or think that observing them is what brings salvation, but rather that we may observe them well and humbly as an expression of our faith. And so in response to God's word, let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the words which we have heard, so as to be transformed into what we hear. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we go forth and live both our faith and the laws by our life.